What's up guys, it's JZNES back again with another video. Today here we're talking about some Life is Strange 2, Episode 4, uh, Faith. Um, and I think this episode kind of fixes some of my complaints about the last episode. We're getting back on track now. Uh, interesting stuff is happening, uh, like relevant to the main plot. Like I guess the main plot is kind of the whole... Just the relationship between Daniel and uh, and his brother there, like getting to Mexico and all of that. Even though we still don't know why that's so important that he gets there, because it is it because it's his dad's dream or like what's the deal there. Um, but yeah, spoilers for this episode and previous episodes. Uh, so let's talk about we'll talk about this faith here. So uh. You wake up from the last episode in a hospital, um, and Daniel's gone, and you don't know where he's at, and so you're really worried about that, obviously, uh, and in my case, my eye on this side was, uh, completely destroyed, so, or cut out, or something, it got fucked up, so it's missing, it's gone, uh, so they gave me a different eye. So I had to keep replacing the, uh, these, like, eye ga uh, gauze things and clean it out and all this and whatnot. And that was, like, a big part of the episode. Um, uh, but yeah, you're in this hospital. Um, your, uh, your nurse there, um, it's a friendly guy named Joey. He's really cool. Um, he gives you an eye test at one point and, like... Uh, there's an option where you can like summon him to help you escape the hospital uh, in a bit here but um, like I didn't really take that route so actually I didn't really even get a chance to really say goodbye to him um, but yeah you sit around for a while you look at a couple of things he comes in helps you talk about your talks about your eye and stuff and like how you're supposed to clean it out and I kept expecting that to mean something. Like, I was going to have to remember that later. But no, he always just did it himself, which is nice. Um, then an agent comes in from, like, the police or the FBI or something. And she, she's, like, uh, trying to talk to you about the story. And so I just told her that the cop shot my dad. You know, same old shit I had said before. Um, she asked me to pin the, the stuff at the farm on somebody. I told him it was Finn's idea, um, because it was, and I, and I told her I kept refusing, and all of us kept refusing, and it wasn't Daniel's fault or anybody else's, it was specifically his fault. At least she asked about Cassidy, too, and I told her, nope, not Cassidy's fault. Um, Cassidy and the others, like, were, a couple of them were at the hospital there, uh, Finn... Well, so, the only two at the hospital were Cassidy and Finn. Cassidy got out, like, a few months before or something. You were in a coma for a little bit there, and you had to stay longer because they were going to uh, put you into, a, like, a, like, juvie or something, that kind of thing, um, because they think you killed your dad and the kid. Or not that you killed your dad. They think you, like, hurt that kid or whatever. And, uh, that you did all the stuff to hurt the cops. Uh, which apparently are dead. So Daniel killed some, some cops. Uh, not on purpose, obviously. He doesn't remember anything, but... You know, it is what it is. So... I mean... Not to say they deserved it, but they killed my dad, so whatever. Um... Yeah, so... There's that. Um, the whole first part is, is that, and then... You start to formulate this plan to escape. They have a guard outside your room. So there's a couple of ways you can go about it. Uh, you pry this, like, uh, grip bar, you know, like, they put, like, near toilets and stuff for, like, handicapped people, I guess. Uh, they, they pry that off, or you pry that off of there. And you can either use it to break open, um, a safety on the window and go around the scaffolding, which is what I did. Or you can use it to take out the guard by making a fake, like, in-bed thing of yourself and then hitting the guard and then doing it that way. Or you can ask Joey to help you escape. Um, 
if you can convince him kind of thing. I didn't do any of those. I just went on the the scaffolding on the outside or whatever. Um, and then that gets you to a room that's in, under construction. And so you go in there and then you just go across the, the way to grab your stuff. The guard's asleep or whatever. So uh, you grab your backpack and then like some of the supplies for your eye. And then you like get out of there. You crawl down the scaffolding. Finn's in one of the rooms and you can either wake him up or not wake him up. I woke him up just to say hey or whatever. Um, even though I already had accused him earlier. Um, and he was talking for a little bit and then you get the choice to forgive him or not and I, I told him yeah I forgive you etc etc then you know you kind of leave it there and oh um, then, then you leave basically you go to like a hot wire car in the uh in the the parking lot there and then you take off um oh you find this journal entry by the way that uh Joey brings you in um from uh, Jacob from the last episode um, saying that he has Daniel and, and they went to this uh, this church called Haven's Point. I don't think he knows that it's a church at first, but you definitely know that later in the episode because you go there. So yeah, he starts driving, keeps driving, driving, driving. He uh, stops to take a rest out in the middle of the desert. And these guys come up. This might be, like, the most uncomfortable part of the episode. I, I think this was definitely unnecessary, but they have to remind us. This game is very political. So, uh, these guys come up, and they're like, hey, you're on a fucking property. They're, they're all pissed about that or whatever. And he's like, I didn't know. I'll leave, you know, whatever. I was just trying to get some rest. And um, But they decide to make fun of him because he's Mexican, you know, because that's cool to do, apparently. Uh, this is 2016. We have to... Put some racial and political tension in there. Because that's what this game's all fucking about. It's kind of... I guess good, but also... this. There's no way to make this part, like, good, you know? You, you get beat up regardless. And I guess that's the point. Is it, But it's just... It's just really, like, fucking... Like, uh, really? We're doing this? Like... He makes them, like, sing a song and say all this shit in Spanish. Like, you're not from... I'm not, this isn't my country, and I should go back to where I came from, and all this stupid bullshit that I don't, it's like, God, it's like, why, why are we doing this? Y you want players to actively have to choose this shit? Come on, that's so stupid, fuck that. And like, uh, yeah, so he sings Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in Spanish, and then they let you go. And then there's this, that's just the whole part, you know? What the fuck was the point of that, you know? So, so fucked up. That's so fucked up. Um, so, yeah. But they don't really do anything other than that, which is stupid. Um, so, I, I didn't like that part. That's maybe, like, the one part of the episode I'm just like, yeah, this was unnecessary. So, yeah, whatever. Then you uh, run out of gas in the middle of the desert, and they foreshadow this if you, like, look at the gas gauge and stuff, and it'll tell you, like, there's no way I'll make it all the way, but it's like, why didn't he just stop at a gas station or think about that? I guess he didn't he didn't know and there's not always gas stations out there, etc, etc. But he makes it close. He makes it within like an hour's uh, car ride to there. He's out walking in the desert and he like sits under um, a sign to make some shade. He, he thinks about how fucked everything is and it's like 22 miles away, Point Haven. So he's waiting and... You know, then he starts walking again, and then the truck comes by, and is like, um, stops, and you go up to the truck, and the trucker offers you a ride, and you're like, well, you know, I don't know if I can trust these people or whatever, but it's really such a harmless thing, so you, you, literally nothing happens other than the fact that you're just more tired and sunburnt when you get there, so you might as well take the trucker's ride. Uh, just spoilers there. That, that's that's a inconsequential kind of choice. Um, and I guess your faith, you know, it's the episode title there, in humanity is rewarded because you hang out with them. He assures you he's not like some weirdo and, you know, you, you can rest and whatever. But before that, he gives you like his sandwich that his wife made and... Uh, I don't know, he says some other, a few other things, um, like his company 
like asked him over the radio there like hey why did you stop and he's like oh it was a shit stop because they're like out in the middle of the desert why would you stop etc etc there's like a hitchhiking law it's you know it's more fucking stupid political stuff we got to put in here anyway um he's like i don't give a shit about that law you know you don't deserve to be walking out there and i was like all right this guy's pretty cool um so there's that but you can understand if sean was apprehensive about that because there was like a few people in, in the game that kind of have sucked so far so yeah he just gives you a ride and then he assures you like be weary around these people because they're pretty crazy and sean's like oh really so then he, he gets out and he goes over um and you see it's like this church or whatever and this guy's talking to this little girl and she's sick and He's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. You'll you'll get better. The Lord will make you better, kind of thing. And and uh, I gotta say it, like, I hate it when stuff paints religion in this kind of, you know, sense. Like, oh, well, that's what the church would say. They're gonna say medicine will make you, or medicine won't work. God will make you better, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you have faith in God. I know because I was. I am religious in, in some sense. I don't really, like, go to church or nothing anymore, but, like, um, you know, but I still, I still feel that, you know. You, you, you pray to have, to have the world, uh, to have God kind of, um, set you on the right path to get to those things. Whether that be through earthly things like medicine, which is, perfectly acceptable um that you have that kind of stuff as long as you have access to that kind of stuff uh but the the lady there the main reverend lady was like purposefully not letting her go to a doctor to keep her sick so that like she could heal her with god or something she thought that was gonna work out for her or she didn't, and she was just being an asshole. I don't really understand all of that. I mean, that that's how you control them. You keep them weak or something. That's kind of a whole theme of her subplot there. I, I don't... I don't know. And that, but it, the game paints religion in such a bad light in that regard. Like, it doesn't necessarily straight out say, like, this is how all religions are. But it definitely doesn't not say that, you know? And um, the way they keep going, that, that all the game has to comment on religion about is these negative sides because a crazy lady is running this church. They don't really, you know, put out there the option that maybe, hey, she's just the crazy one. Um, but th the church is fine, you know, as long as it's not run by her. Other churches could be fine or something. Uh, they don't really tackle that. They just kind of. It seems like they kind of villainize religion, which is kind of a little bad thing on, on my end. I, I don't want to think that that's what was the intention, but that's certainly how it comes off. And I just think that's kind of, it's kind of bullshit, you know, it's kind of cruel. Um, you know, like the last game, that had like a decent, or the first game, I would say, had a decent message about like God and stuff and somewhat, a little bit, uh, you know, with the whole Kate thing, even though... Bad things happened to her, but uh, I don't know. They, they had they had a good balance there. This this is wasn't as good of a balance. Um, but it's not really as much about that. I'm just saying that's kind of how they painted that. And that that was a little bad for me. Um, didn't really like that. Anyway, so you go into this church. You hear this guy talking. Um, the little girl ba goes back inside. You hear this guy talking, and he's like talking to Sean about yeah. Oh, you know why are you here? This kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, well, you should come inside and, and stay for the service. Uh, there's a miracle happening. Um, you'll, and he's like, you'll see. And, and then at that point, you kind of clicks in your head like, hey, this is Daniel using his power. And that's the miracle. Maybe it is a miracle. I don't know. They still haven't fucking explained his power at all or given us any hints at it. At least Max was like trying to figure it out. Um, the other thing that I was missing in the last episode is every or yeah when i was talking about the last episode everything in the game is leading to the storm at the end they, they established that the very first part of the very first episode there's this giant storm that's all caused by max's powers that 
is all like the through line of the story there and it all comes back to that in the end it's very cleverly written this is not leading to anything except for us getting to mexico but we, we don't have any concept of why that's important or why that's is that gonna mean freedom i mean they had freedom on the road i already discussed that kind of like you know like i don't know like what, what's gonna really be so free about that that's gonna be dangerous down there too so uh i don't know we'll see what, how the fifth episode turns out that's definitely kind of the direction the the teaser makes me think that they're going it's just they're gonna get there and maybe that's it maybe that's what he'll figure out well this isn't as great as i thought it was gonna be i don't know why we uh really tried so hard to get here and i don't know what's gonna well um, we'll get that get to that in a second so you're in there you see daniel um after the service you kind of try and go and confront him and get him to take take him away or whatever but uh the the reverend was like oh no you can't you can't take him away this is my you know he's a miracle he's this is what we're meant to he's meant to be here and, and daniel kind of agrees um that was the other thing is that it was always said that she was brainwashing him and she she was to an extent she was uh, manipulating him and whatnot but the the way it sounded was like she was saying that it, it was definitely a metaphor like the the church was manipulating him it always sounded kind of like that like this faith is brainwashed you, you know you kind of thing not not the most like represent like well represented stuff for for that for yeah it just it just was kind of icky in in my in my opinion anyway um so yeah they, they kind of after daniel says like no i'm not going anywhere this is what i was meant to do um he's like i found a home here this is it you know this is like this is where i belong so then they kick sean out um and the the guy from earlier like once it once he's at the gate uh because sean just like doesn't want to let go he's like no i gotta get in there and get my brother out of here um the guy at the gate like pulls out a gun and he's like don't you fucking come back you know basically um and you could you could choose to like intervene and like fight him or something there i don't know i didn't do it i just said do nothing and and that was probably a good thing because he had a gun so um so yeah you you fall back but at that moment uh your mom karen comes up she starts talking to you and then she uh convinces you to get in her car and you go back to a motel and uh sean is like taking a shower he comes out of the shower um and like she she's left for whatever reason she went to go get some supplies and food and stuff um and sean's just there and, and you can like check out the room for a minute um and eventually you find a note from her that says to call uh jacob who has you know um who had daniel there obviously he's not with him anymore but um and then so you call jacob and he's like okay meet us meet me under this sign you know um the next day or whatever and we'll talk about how to get uh how to get uh daniel free or whatnot so then your mom comes back she gives you like a cheeseburger and helps you like or no well no that's in a minute here um you know you talk for a second and then you uh you you, you either have the an the the chance to hear her out or not hear her out um multiple 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 times there's a lot of times where you can just say yeah whatever i'm done listening to your stuff but you if you're like me i wanted to hear her out because you know i wanted to hear what went so wrong here so i heard her out and um eventually sean goes outside to get some air um and then she comes out and you keep talking etc etc basically what it comes down to is she wasn't really uh all for the the family life and she wanted to leave to pursue her life because um she just wasn't really into the family life i i don't know it's something like that she wanted some freedom you know she wanted to go and pursue her dreams she just felt like she wasn't really getting everything she could out of life there um and it's not necessarily that she didn't care about the kids or she didn't care about the dad 
but because she said she still loved the dad but like she just had other things she needed to go and do with her life i don't know i don't know if it's well written or not well written it doesn't it kind of seemed like a lazy reason but at the same time they wrote it in a decent enough way for me to just be like okay whatever she seems fine you know she seems like she's she just wants to help now and that's kind of what matters um and i thought i thought that and i'm like okay yeah that's fine she can uh you know we can use her help so um yeah and then you can there's like a choice where you can smoke a cigarette with her and have more of a conversation and i chose to do that you keep talking and talking and talking and then um yeah okay so then eventually you go back inside and then she can there's a choice where if you did everything right she can help you change out your eye patch thing um so you know i i had her help me do that because um because that was in my choices or whatnot and my conversation went well enough and then she just gives you like a, a real eye patch rather than like a gauze one or whatever so that's cool she uh she helps you out there. It's one of the things she bought, the supplies. Um, yeah, and then it's like basically you go to the next day, you meet the kid under uh, Jacob under the uh, the sign there that it, that it spec they that he had specified, and you have a conversation with them. He saved all your money from the camp and whatever, which is cool. Actually, you can offer to give it to him later uh, to help his sister, but. I didn't do that. Um, apparently he has the money anyway to help her, so that's good. Um, so giving the money to him actually feels kind of pointless. I mean, it's a nice gesture and everything. Um, but, you know, whatever. So, yeah, you talk to him and he's like, uh, we have to go and, and break into the lady's house, the reverend to her house, because we need to get the medical file to see what's wrong with my sister. Which is like, do you really, though? Like, I mean, why don't you just take her to a hospital to begin with? You don't have to break into anywhere in this house at that point. You could just all go and get Daniel then. Isn't that... I don't know. Whatever. Um, while you're breaking into the Reverend's house, though, it, it does help because you find out a lot of stuff about her. Like, she was kicked out of her last church. She's purposely not giving medicine and... and, and medical care to this little girl and that um what was the other thing there was like one more thing oh and that she's taking medicine herself uh even though she pri she preaches about the you know like god will cure you kind of thing so she's a hypocrite you know and, and she's done some bad stuff um and you use all of those little clues later uh, to to get Daniel to believe you um, while you're kind of confronting them both about the whole, like, thing. So, yeah. And you see Daniel's room, and it's, it's like, way more um, sterile, I would say, than you would expect it to be. You know, it's just really... There's nothing going on in there, you know? It's just very... Um, empty and, and not great uh you can find his like sweatshirt in the in his closet so i took that with me I'll, I'll probably give it back to him in the next episode i suppose um so and then when you're you're, you're in the office you're talking to to jacob when you find the files you have to like find a key to get in there kind of thing um he uh you you look at his file too and they were like he was talking about how they did like this conversion therapy crap on him uh, because he was gay or whatever. Um, and at first they kind of like dodge around the issue. And then he's like, yeah, I always liked uh, boys better than girls. So you're like, okay, well, it's obvious what they're saying. They never outright say gay, but it's like, you might as well at this point. You had two previous games where there were very gay options. I don't, I don't see why you're like skirting around the issue here. It doesn't really matter. Um... Maybe it's another political thing, you know? I don't know. Fuck it. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, again, painting the church in a really bad light. Not that, you know, obviously we're trying to paint her in a bad light, but you could have distinctified that, that 
that's not how all churches work. Not all religions work, you know. Uh, they don't all do that. I mean, they kind of used to do shit like that, which is fucking stupid. But, um, you know, they kind of get over it at, at, at some point in history. I mean, for the most part. Um, sure, there's still some churches out there like that, but... Um, my point being that, uh, yeah, so there's that. Then when you're in the office, the uh, guy from earlier, who well, I'm pretty sure never gets a name. Uh, but by the way, Karen's watching from like a, a distance, and she's got like a walkie-talkie to let you know shit. And she informs you that he's coming um, to... Uh, to like uh to the office so that he's gonna like basically catch you so you have to hide um so you hide in a closet and he he never really caught on to the fact that i was there basically i never got caught which is nice it is an option to get caught um so yeah so i i stayed hidden uh, Jacob wasn't caught either and then we got out of there and then we went over to the church and um, He basically just barrel in the front entrance and then you start talking to Jacob and the and the lady and uh, Telling her and Karen's there too and you just tell tell them about all of the stuff there And eventually Daniel kind of believes you it takes a little bit uh, and and the thing is they keep uh, the, the the guy keeps like punching uh, Sean, he keeps falling over and you keep having to press the X button, like mash the X button. Like it reminded me of something like Metal Gear Solid 4 and like the, uh, the, the room at the end where you have to mash the button, you know, like the, uh, microwave room or whatever. You have to keep mashing the button. It reminded me of something like that. Uh, and he keeps getting back up and he, and he, he even pistol whips him a couple of times because he's got that gun and he just keeps getting back up no matter what, just to show Daniel like, hey, I'm here for you, man. Like, um, and then you tell him all the damning evidence, and then he's like, yeah, I don't think I want to be with these guys anymore. So he, like, uses his powers. He actually uses his powers at one point to push Sean away, which which was at the very beginning of the conversation. But um, later he, he gets away, and then um, there's, like, a candle that fell over, so, like, the place is catching on fire now. And uh, so... While the place is catching on fire, you're having these, like, arguments or whatever. Um, you finally get Daniel back on your side. And then you, like, go to the door and the lady's, like, standing in front of it. Like, you're gonna have to kill me! Um, I think he, like, knocks out the guy so you, like, have the gun or whatever. Uh, Daniel does. So, you have the gun. So, you have the option of literally just shooting her. Uh, and if your morality's low enough, Daniel will, like, torture her while you shoot her. Which is pretty fucked up. Uh, I luckily had my morality very high with Daniel, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, because I got the best option where nobody dies, and, uh, nobody gets hurt, and so, um, he basically just force pushed the lady aside, force pushed the door open, and we left, and, and that was it, and the place burned down. Cool, good job, good, good for you, Daniel, but apparently some of the other options are pretty fucked up, like, um, there's one where, like, like, uh, I guess it would be, like, if your morality's high enough with Daniel, but, like, and, and your brotherhood and whatever, and then you just, like, shoot them, uh, Karen and him are just, like, shocked that you did that, um, or shoot her, and Car Karen's just, like, and, um, Daniel are just, like, shocked that you did that, apparently, is one of the options, stuff like that. I got the best option, in my opinion. Don't kill the lady. She doesn't deserve it. She is crazy, but I, I don't think killing anybody is right in this circumstance you know in this game so far um i don't know maybe like that that merrill guy even though he was kind of nice um but, but he would have these like weird jumping back and forth between like oh i'm a nice guy now i'm a fucking asshole you know i don't know so far you know like we, we we've avoided killing people so i'm trying to continue to do that so, uh, you're just hanging over there, aren't you? Hey, um, yeah, do you want to wanna maybe get up on there so you don't fall over? Um, 
Let's see, what was I saying? So yeah, we didn't we didn't have to kill her, which is nice. Um, then you see a scene of them all overlooking the town, um, and Jacob is like leaving with his sister. Um, Daniel says goodbye to the sister because she was like they were like friends or whatever. And then um, you drive off with Karen and and Daniel, and um, they hug Daniel and Sean, and that's it. That's the episode. Um, so I think that was definitely, um, it, it meant a lot more than the last episode, um, you know, I, I feel like, and it, just the whole mom thing and then Daniel being involved more and, and the fact that you kind of have to win him over again, um, it, it still feels a little weird and kind of maybe not, the game doesn't really seem to have a main thing and, and it's meandery with that, you know, and it's just like these... These episodes all feel really disconnected. Like, Life is Strange, it was all about the power of time traveling. Um, and you would do different things with that. And it built on that. And, and your consequences were seen by that. And you would um, have different things. And it was all about Rachel Amber. Like, you're trying to find her. So everything kind of all had a purpose. And interwove itself. It all kind of made sense. Here, nothing really makes sense. I mean... You're chasing down Daniel the whole time. I mean, I, yeah, that's good in its own right, but it's like, that's the whole game. It's like, I don't know. It just seems a little weird and very different from the uh, previous games. Uh, but it's I, this is fine. I, I like this. I'm, I'm having a good enough time. I do want to see how it ends. Um, you know, we're getting there. We got one more episode to go. I think it'll be good. Um, still no banger music tracks or anything. That's why we're playing the uh, Before the Storm soundtrack here. But, eh. You know, we'll see what happens in the, in the final episode. I'm excited to finally finish this game after having it from, like, forever ago. And, uh, you know, not getting around to it until just now. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, until next time, this has been JZNES saying keep it classic. Stick around for more reviews, underrated games. I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z, out.